Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Deep breaths. Uh, clearer heads, strong hearts, whatever. That's why you take a deep breath. Could have spawned in with the troll bomb there. Well, no, we couldn't have. But it's the thought that counts. You know what? Give me this early monkey's paw. Let's look at the stats. Rate of fire is the only... Well, rate of fire and HP are the only bad part right now. BJG8, 7V, ZV. No fear. We've lived this life. Don't think so. We're aware of what happens. You don't want to run where you got one HP. We got a very early, easy job. Don't get hit. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Some people, what's their job? Oh, I go to the nuclear power factory and, and make miracles. What do we do? Easiest thing in the world. Don't get hit by the big bullets on screen. Couldn't be simpler. Straw will help us accomplish this goal. I'll think about that. As will um, Monkey's Paw. Assuming that we don't get hit by a champion enemy. Right out of the gate. Jury's out on these guys. I honestly don't know. And I would say, you know, don't anticipate that we're getting the win. Just because of the way that went down. But dude... Now that we have a spirit heart, we can take a deep breath. I went into this resolute, but ready. You know? Calm. I, w I wouldn't say cool. Collected? Well, maybe if you consider me a magic card. I don't know. Almost certainly a second secret room. No? Okay. Let's go check our shop real quick, like, and see what we got going on here. Because we might be ready to leave with our heads held high. Two of hearts. It's not horrible. Just to keep it... Uh, around and we got an okay chance at an arcade or we got a, a chance full stop at an arcade on the next floor versus champion ragman what do you do against champion ragman well there's a couple of different options an easy one is uh weaken the spiders use the straw i don't believe that we didn't hit anything there. I would like you to review the tape. It doesn't seem plausible to me that we could have uh, gone through that without hitting an enemy. We placed the bomb in the epicenter of two or three of them. And really, we're, we're just waiting on like our next straw. Which I guess you could call the last straw. Finishes the job. We lost half a spirit heart in the process. Honestly, half a spirit heart against, like, probably the most annoying boss in the game. With not fantastic stats. Totally fine. Life goes on. Only thing I'll say in hindsight, I wish I had not spent the bomb to look for the secret room. But as far as the first floor goes, I got very, very few complaints. Curse of the Unknown. Slightly, uh, slightly spooky. But only slightly. And actually, the straw is, like... It, I don't think it's... Uh, I used to think it was one of the top items, top spacebar items, at least in the game. I don't think it is right now. Um, but it does scale with damage. It's usable forever. As the run gets good, it gets better. And if the run's bad, it's a much-needed, you know, jolt of offense, potentially. But I think we've got uh, everything stitched up here for now, you know? That golden key is really nice. Maybe it's not exactly what we're looking for, but pick up Humbling Bundle. I will say... We probably, and that's fantastic, because we can turn that into a secret room access here, which is not really worth that much, but might save us. I guess we don't save a key because we have a golden key, which is great for us because we'll use it right here and see what we got. Three free chests. God bless Retrovision. I've started, to, I'm reframing the way I think about bad stuff in Isaac. Like, for example, old NL. How did I feel about Retrovision? Oh, well, it's, uh, no, DAE, I get the joke, ha ha ha. Now I'm like, dude, at least it's not a bad trip pill. <laughs> Who knows, maybe the tendency to have pills be a joke is saving us from the pill rotation being substantially worse. I'll, I'll do you one better here. Even though our rate of fire is already trash and doubling it seems terrible, I'm betting on the straw. And that was a nice little dipsy doodle there. The straw gets better, and I actually th here's my hypothesis, okay, about uh, about the way that Eve's mascara, or uh, here's my hypothesis about Isaac in general to some extent. 
Um, I think the further away you are from the average tier rate, the more every tier's upgrade is worth. So I'm starting to come to the idea, and I wouldn't call it authoritative, but I'm starting to believe, although 30 rate of fire is truly horrendous, something that halves our rate of fire and doubles our damage actually serves to make every subsequent tier's upgrade a little bit better than it otherwise would be if we had not taken the item. Could be wrong. Could be very wrong. I mean, we're definitely going to take it. Now we have 13 damage. Terrible rate of fire, but 13 damage. This is potentially big moments for us. I want to leave with a lot of HP. With Monkey's Paw, we're still kind of set, but... I mean, you're, you're probably at this point like, hey, stop talking about Isaac. You know what? Like, first off, it's either Isaac or Hockey right now, so so take your pick. Alternatively, um, you know, this run started with one HP. Those are the Eden starts that right now I live for, and I'm not being insincere. You know, a, a start where you everything's sorted for you is also amazing, totally fine. But a start where you're really in the grind... You know, you're, tr you're fighting to make it work early, and you know, all you need is, it's like a fingernail, you know? One ragged edge could take the whole thing off if it gets caught. That's what we're doing. We're trying to find that ragged edge, a little spot of weakness the game's leaving open. We put that on our wool sweater. All of a sudden, we got bloody knuckles. I don't know, the metaphor kind of fell apart. Either way, we got two... Ways to generate spirit hearts now. This could be big. Thank you. Um, both of them... Well, I think Maw of the Void is substantially more reliable than the Straw. We got a good one-two punch, and I like when runs uh, like this kind of manifest themselves. They, they usually tend to be a little bit on the unique side. Um, you know, any... Oh, that was so bad. Any run where you have, like, a, uh, a tandem is uncommon. You know, we got Maw of the Void coming through. Best way of dealing damage. Super good against weak enemies. And then on top of that, we got uh, the Straw basically picking up the the waste. You know, the, the, the enemies that have the nerve to still exist at the end of the room. Now, the downside to both of them is... Every single time. The downside to both of them is exactly the same. They take friggin' forever to charge. It's no good. We need... I mean, there's no downside to raising our rate of fire. That would just benefit the whole run, and we would... We'd be... We'd have it in a cinch. I don't know what that means. You know, I know what it means in practice, but I don't, I don't actually know what a cinch is. It's a verbiage from my youth, but I think it was probably invented in, like, you know, the 1700s or something like that. So we used to say, that's a cinch. And I feel like for a decade or two, the verbiage fell out of favor. I very rarely hear the phrase cinch anymore. I've said it so much over the course of the past, you know, 15 seconds, the, the phrase has started to lose all meaning. So here's a galaxy brain take, okay? What could we use that's a little bit out of the box? Well, a cube of meat is not the answer, but it's okay. Um, Death's List is also not the answer. And my One of my old year's resolutions, because I'm still stuck here in the past in December, is uh, stop sacrificing your runs to deals with the devil just because the items are good. You know, context matters in these situations. Probably stop taking pills as well. <laughs> In the game, not in real life. I've been taking a lot of pills in real life, but it's a good thing. I've been taking a multivitamin every single day uh, because of the eldritch fear that was struck into me when I got ill so many times this year, and it's been working out okay so far. I am a little bit annoyed uh, because I haven't gotten my superpowers yet from taking a multivitamin every single day, but I'm sure it'll happen eventually. I also had a great idea for a t-shirt, and here's it's not an NL-branded t-shirt, but we could put like a little egg on the tag if it makes it more likely to sell, okay? The shirt, and I, it's, it's in like, you know, No Fear, that brand. It's in that text. It's kind of, it's got like a DeShare Zone kind of aesthetic going on. 
uh, and it says, Don't frick with me. I take name brand vitamins. And name brand is in like, it's got red lightning bolts around it. Now, I, you might think that, you know, just because 95% of the people watching this are like, I wouldn't even, I would make fun of that shirt if I saw it. You might think that that means I shouldn't sell it. But, dude, if I can get 5% of the people watching this video to consider buying that shirt, that's a, that's a fiscal win. And it's kind of, uh, it's the aesthetic I like to put out there as well. So it's really a perfect, it's a match made in heaven. Uh, I am going to Joker. And this was kind of the reason. I don't know. I just had, in my in my heart of hearts, I felt the Krampus fight approaching. And uh, I thought, why not get that out of the way? To be honest with you, I'm very happy sticking with the straw. It has not paid out uh, in a spirit heart related context for us so far. And that's totally okay. I'm still feeling like real strongly about the way this run's going so far. And it... I will say this run is still marked for deletion. You know, like a Wikipedia entry about a band that we thought was going to blow up but has not really made that next leap yet. There's a way that this all comes tumbling down. And obviously we do want uh, Blood Bag. Let me also give a big, uh, a big up. Let me give big ups. To, uh, which I guess now that I think about it is probably short for thumbs up, but um, or is it short for upwards? The board game that is not Scrabble, but is legally distinct as far as a corporate entity goes. They might be published by the same company for all I know. Pardon me. Let me give big ups to. Wait, what item was I gonna say? Oh, um, humbling bundle, which you know shouldn't surprise anybody, but it's been a pretty spectacular item for us in terms of getting our consumable game unbelievably under control beyond under control we're actually we've gone from slightly in a tailspin to, to climbing too high too fast you know we're, we're balling out of control now which is a good thing in case you're not familiar with the modern parlance of our times bear Kano. i like it i love it i don't really you know want any more of it but i appreciate it nonetheless small rock please no that's so fine tears up it's a new expression I've been trying out. That's a fine. It's uh, it's like that's all right combined with uh, brain freeze. And I'm feeling like, I don't know. It's you know, I never really understood the expression. Conf uh, confidence breeds competence, and vice versa. Or competence breeds confidence is what I mean to say. The better you are at something, the better you expect to be. You know, when I started to understand it is yesterday. When I was driving around downtown Vancouver, you know, uh, driven around downtown Vancouver a couple hundred times, and uh, that's interesting. I'm gonna say no because we want charges, and let's just evaluate these items as they come. That's funny, but I think dangerous. Now that's just what you take, and we almost doubled our rate of fire. Plus, got an item for next time. Um, Driven around Vancouver a couple hundred times, without a doubt. Uh, downtown Vancouver specifically, I mean. Um, please stop hitting me. I'm Ryan. But I've always had the aid of a navigation system. A GPS, a sat-nav, etc., etc. 20 years ago, that would have been a brag of impossible standards. That would have meant that I worked for the American military or was a billionaire. Now, it just means I have a cellular telephone. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the Isaac series, but our car was broken into. And by broken into, I mean I left it unlocked and some petty belongings were stolen from it. The most critical of the belongings stolen from our vehicle was the SD card that our dealership gave us with the navigation data preloaded on it. So I was driving around yesterday you know, it's raining, it's dark, it's a Friday night, it's busy, World Juniors are in town, lots of traffic. I don't know where I'm going. I said to myself, you got a couple of options, you know? Hold on, I just want to see if we got some guppy-related merchandise in here. Ooh. Uh, I said to myself, you got a couple of options. Option one, you know, you could use your phone. 
There's no good reason not to. Option two, you could choose to live a little. You know, you've been driving these roads. You know where your Nelsons and your Hornbys and your, your Drakes and your Davies are. And your Berards and your Robsons and your Granvilles and your Albernies and your Thurlows. And your Dunbars and so on and so forth. You got a rough idea where Cordova and Pender coalesce at Waterfront Station. Just wing it. And you know what? I winged it. I got around. It was fine. And I feel like just from that one experience, I'm like probably like 2% better at driving. Which is a lot when it, for a skill that you've been doing, you know, for a while. And I feel the same in Isaac to some extent. Dude, growth hormones. Thank you. I don't want any of these, but still. Even though we're good on HP now, why um, why take an item that isn't really going to add much at this point? Um, it's the same way I feel about Isaac, I think, is a good metaphor. Another good example, you know, I always like to use school as a metaphor because it's kind of universal as well. But, you know, everybody has subjects that they're just like lights out in. Or almost everybody, at least. You know, even if it's not mathematics, science, you know, you go into your auto shop lab, you know you're good. You know why? Because you know this stuff. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm anxious sometimes about the marks that I get on my programming assignments. I'm never anxious about the final exam because I know how to program. I do the work in the class. When they give you unlimited time, that's when I get nervous because I'm like, what are their expectations? When they give you two hours and they say, hey, here's your task, no, no anxiety whatsoever. Not everybody's in the same boat on that one. I feel for people who are not strong exam takers because you got to face that fear like all the time. But... You know, it tends to work out in my favor. That's what's happening in Isaac literally right now as we speak. Like, I'm not even focusing on what's happening in the run. Where were we 14 minutes ago? Probably thinking, you know, realistically, we had at least a 25% chance to die. Monkey's Pot did help. Like, a, unbelievably so. Um, and then a couple of, you know, good items. Up to some good. Removed all of the trouble from the neighborhood. I had a Krampus fight, and uh, Edmund got scared. He said, here's a retrovision pill. Okay, I don't know where we're going. It's the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song. As I'm sure I needed to tell nobody. Um, you have to forgive me. I'm from the generation that, uh, you know, I was part of the generation that was there for the, the inauguration of the Rickroll, for sure. But also, prior to that, or I don't know, my, my timeline from those years is a little bit fuzzy. Thanks, college. Um... But at, at some point, you know, it became like a little bit of a, a proto-meme to, to tell a fake story on Facebook and then finish, you know, at some point you'd veer into, you know, I would, well, then I found myself in eastern Pennsylvania playing my favorite game, a little bit of street basketball when a couple of guys who were up to no, and then you're like, wait a minute. And then, you know, a couple of years later, that's when I noticed it wasn't a couple of guys at all, but a 60-foot monster from a lake in Scotland. And I said, duh, Loch Ness Monster, I'm not going to give you 350. You get the idea. We don't need it. It's a very modest damage upgrade and a slight speed upgrade. Get closer to spawn or get spawn even better. I don't know what it is now. For a while, it was... Uh, Mankind throwing the under or the Undertaker throwing mankind through a steel cage in WrestleMania 1998. I don't know what the hip memes. Well, that's not true. I do know what the hip memes are. I never know where they're from. But you know, a meme in the end is just a an inside joke. And as Michael Scott said, and I echo this, I love inside jokes. I hope I'm part of one one day. Almost botched it. Okay, give me a treasure map. And here's the thing. A win is the most important thing. So is Zane. If we can get a win and a little Zane, sign me up. We did. I, personally, I think we got a little bit of Zane going on. I took Eve's Mascara. You can't tell me that's not at least a little bit zany. We do need both stopwatches at some point. Not going to be here. We may do boss rush. The item would have to be like at least, I don't know, like a like an eight. It has to be an eight in general for us to take the item at this point. Small rock, please. 
not good enough, but but close, especially with Hive Mind. Um, anyway, where was I going with that? Oh, I mean, that's how I feel. Uh, wait, I was talking about other memes as well. Um, there's also a uh, hit or miss. I guess they never miss. Again, familiar with it, not at all familiar with the origin. But at some point, you know, let me hit you with my hypothesis of memeology. At some point, the origin of a meme is irrelevant. The origin of the meme is the meme itself. For example, 2018's apparently regrettable meme, Do You Know The Way? Originated from some... Uh, VR chat streams, or I mean, perhaps a, a YouTube video that then became something people said in VR chat, and then the VR chat videos went viral. But at some point, the meme and the exact origin point of it becomes secondary. If you're not one of the early meme adopters, the origin point for the meme is not, you know, the factory where the meme was made. The origin point is the point at which it's hit nascence in the public eye. My personal two cents. Like, for example, I have no idea what the source point of uh, hit or miss, I guess they never miss is. And every time people try to tell me, I say I'm unfamiliar with who that is. I don't visit those kind of websites, okay? You heathens. But, uh... The actual origin point, I don't know... It's got to be a Twitch chat somewhere. It must be a Twitch chat to say, hey, have you seen this? And then everybody in the chat started saying, I guess they never miss. And it got spread out to other chats. And then, regrettably, YouTubers trying to maintain, you know, some semblance of cultural relevance just shoehorn it into every tweet forever to show that they're still hip and still with it. And taka 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 taka. And then there's me, the 15th consumer in the link. Hmm. I don't think this is a tough choice. I think you just take... Incubus, and you don't take Whore of Babylon. Come on, come on, do better than the lovers. Come on, come on, I don't need the lover's card. See, I really like the song Money Talk by ACDC, because I hate the song, but it's uh, an ACDC song that sounds good when you don't sing it in a voice that sounds like a raccoon being drowned in a garbage can that was slightly too tall for it to get out of. You know, like, back in black. I'm like, that's a distressed animal. Back in black! Hit the sick! You'd be like, dude, there's something in our garbage can. <laughs> I'm not trying to offend ACDC fans. My father is a unbelievable ACDC fan. He loves ACDC. Even he, I don't think you would ever say, you know, that the lead singer of ACDC has a good voice. He has a very distinctive voice. I listen to a lot of bands, by the way, for the exact same criticism can be applied to them. You guys ever hear of uh, Clap Your Hands, Say Yeah? Son, heard my father tell me, you get the idea. Distinctive would be a polite way to put it. I'm taking Sack Dagger. You know why I'm taking Sack Dagger? And I know I will not be fighting the Hush, even with an Algis rune. Um, I'm taking it because if we get hit, we get invincibility. Sack Dagger will kill every enemy. And again, I have to uh, get, you know, just say again 15 times in order to introduce a bit. But I have to say, um, you know, I apologize for the fact that this run is really picked up. But, I mean, you come by it honestly when you see that you got a freaking 33 damage stat, okay? Now, what makes a good voice? I don't know. There are, there are singers who have great voices who I find intolerable. Just because the, I find that the work they do very boring. Pleasant! Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. If, you're, if you want to listen to pleasant music. And it, that's not a value judgment. There are some times... I mean, I've told you, like, my musical tastes, basically at this point, I've actually started to listen to more and more music recently, but I'm in instead of listening to one album at a time, I'm now just listening to eight albums of a time that I liked when I was 17. You know, I, I will be forever crystallized in that era, and I'm okay with it. 
Because at least I'm not crystallized in the terrible music that was on the radio during that era. I can live with it. Um, anything good? Empress? Why not? Take it in and then get Alges for the next floor. Um, you know, there, there are times... For about a year, here's the only time I listened to music was uh, when I was programming. And I listened to one of like three pieces of music. I listened to Brian Eno's Ambient One, a.k.a. Music for Airports. I listened to Boards of Canada's Music Has the Right to Children. Or inexplicably, I listened to Liz Fair's 1995 album Exile on Guyville. And I will pick up these question marks because I'm not afraid. They ended up not being too amazing, but that's that's fine. That's life, dude. So I always, you know, before ooh, let's go. Before I, uh, you know, throw stones, I like to throw two stones back at myself. You know the expression before you point your finger. Remember, you got one finger pointed out. You got one. You got three fingers pointed back at you. I like to be the three fingers first. I point at myself with three fingers, and then just accidentally, you gotta realize that there's one coming back at you. At you guys, I mean, not at me. So I didn't really finish my thought from earlier, but what I was gonna say is, we're at a, an extreme level of confidence in Isaac. I don't start runs cocky right now. I don't say, hey everybody, welcome back to This is Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus, the I Never Lose edition. That worked well for a while, and then it didn't. I come back now, and I know that I got the tools in the toolbox with a lifetime warranty that allow me to succeed. We start with one HP, doesn't matter. We're getting the job done. That's win 19. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps us a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!